And I cried out to the Lord. He heeded my call against my assailants. He is before the beginning of the world, and who endures forever has humbled them. Cast your cares upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. Hear my prayer, O God, and despise not my supplication. Be attentive to me and hear me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When I cried out to the Lord, he heeded my call against my assailants. He who is before the beginning of the world and who endures forever has humbled them. Cast your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the, from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will 
achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Keep me, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Shield me under the shadow of your wings. Let judgment in my favor come forth from your presence. May your eyes discern what is right. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the suffering of this present time are as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have been first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, the word of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. It is fitting, O God, to sing a hymn unto you on Mount Zion, and our vow shall be carried out for you in Jerusalem. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd sat along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky ground, <coughs> where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some of the seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. We study this weekend the parable of the sower and the seeds, a parable that is so familiar to us that we could jump to the conclusion that we already know everything there is to know about it. In fact, our Lord himself teaches us the meaning of the parable. If we read just a few verses more, our Lord says, the seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. So there the gospel is explained by the Lord himself, Father can lead us in the creed and we will be home before we know it. But not so fast. We've heard this parable before, that is correct. But there's something in the gospel that speaks to us today. It is said that every time the gospel is proclaimed, it's proclaimed for the very first time. And today, is the first time that we have heard this gospel reading proclaimed 
since the present crises began. We are living in dangerous times. The barbarians are not only at the gate, they are within the city walls, tearing down our statues, flaunting our laws, assaulting the innocent, calling for the defunding of our police and the total dismantling of our economy and our criminal justice system. And what is frightening is that that call for total dismantlement was made by a member of Congress. The barbarians are not only at the gate, they are within our walls. And so let's examine today's gospel, the parable of the sower and the seeds from the perspective of the sower, the farmer. First, farming is arduous work. The vast tracts of farmland that we see from our Indiana highways were but 200 years ago vast forests that became cornfields only by the grueling task of chopping down trees, pulling stumps, draining swamps, and cultivating the soil so that it would be ready to accept the first seeds that were planted. A trip to Connor Prairie Farm tells that story. The late Paul Harvey sums up in two minutes the backbreaking work of a farmer in his famous lesson, So God Made a Farmer. You can hear it on YouTube. Paul Harvey, So God Made a Farmer. Farming corn and beans is demanding, arduous work. And so is our faith. God's word is a seed a seed meant to bear 30, 60, or even a hundredfold. Should we expect the cultivation of God's word to be easy? The cultivation of God's wisdom, God's plan, God's direction in our lives, this is hard work, demanding that we read and study and pray every single day. Our faith is not a hobby or a pastime. Our faith is our life, our vocation, our task in life to fulfill God's plan for the human race, and it is arduous work. Farming is arduous work, and second, farming is dangerous work. Having served in several rural parishes, I can tell you that very few farmers leave this world with all their digits attached. Sadly, every year there are farming accidents that claim the lives of farmers young and old. Farming communities have a high rate of cancer, perhaps because of the heavy concentration of pesticides and other farm chemicals. Our Lord would speak of the dangerous nature of farming when speaking of enemies who would come in and destroy crops by sowing bad seed in with the good. Conquering armies would punish by burning fields just when the crops were ready for harvest. We call this the scorched earth strategy. Farming is dangerous work, and so is living our faith. We must pay attention to those who tear down our statues, deface our churches, and now intimidate and hinder churchgoers who simply want to enter their place of worship to pray. There are plenty of videos of these modern barbarians doing their evil work with glee that can only be described as demonic, evil spirits who prowl about seeking the ruin of souls. These videos are difficult to watch, but watch them we must. 
God gives us eyes to see, and we must use them. And God gives us a backbone, a spine, and we must never forget the importance of standing up for what we believe. Living our faith is dangerous work. Farming is arduous work, it is dangerous work, and it is essential work. Without farmers in the field, we have no bread for our table. And without Christian people, young and old, doing the hard work of studying the scriptures and the teaching of the church, frequenting the sacraments, and performing the works of mercy, both corporal and spiritual, there is no way that God's word will bear fruit in abundance. Yes, God provides the seed and the clement weather to be sure, but the farmer's work is essential, and so is ours, especially today. If there was ever a time for you to pray fervently, it is today. If there was ever a time for you to study the scriptures and the teachings of the church, it is today. If there was ever a time to perform the works of mercy, it is today. In the fifth century, four years after the complete collapse of the Roman Empire, a baby was born named Benedict. Benedict's formative years transpired as the barbarians wielded full power, destroying in days what it took Romans centuries to build. Benedict's world was a world in disorder. Benedict desired to live a life of holiness, and so he fled to a cave to live a solitary life of prayer. And when his friends came and visited and learned that he was going to live a life of solitary prayer, they said, very good, we'll come with you. And the Benedictine order was born. St. Benedict and his fellow monks would be great farmers, both literally and figuratively. Over the course of the centuries of what some call the Dark Ages, the Benedictines drained the swamps, cleared the forests, and planted crops of every kind. They preserved the great texts of ancient Greece and Rome and founded schools within their walls that would eventually become the great universities of Europe. Yes, barbarians often pillaged the crops the monks had planted and burned down the very churches they had built. But the Benedictines continued on with their life of prayer and work, rebuilding and replanting each and every time, gradually but surely bringing order to the chaos, light to the darkness, and understanding to the ignorant. All of this through work that was arduous, dangerous, and essential. St. Benedict is the patron saint of Europe, for his legacy is the salvation and the upbuilding of what we can proudly call Western civilization. And his feast day is today, July 11. Our world stands in need this day of a new but definitely different Saint Benedict. Through his intercession, may we never give up on the task of rebuilding and replanting, work that is bound to be arduous and dangerous, but absolutely essential to the mission entrusted to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, we humbly bring our petitions before the Lord. Let the church be fertile soil for the growth of God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. That every land rejoices in plenty, foreshadowing the harvest to be shared in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who suffer from physical and spiritual hunger be filled with healing goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. And for those who are sick, especially those suffering with the coronavirus, and those listed in today's bulletin, let us pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that all who have died will be raised up to new and eternal life, especially Don Wilkins, who is remembered in this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Good and gracious God, hear us as we humbly bring our needs before you. We trust always in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Unto you, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be put to shame. Do not allow my enemies to laugh at me, for none of those who are awaiting you will be disappointed. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of 
of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him, says the Lord. i
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Amen.